Hey everybody, it's Irene with Brainstorm Makers. And apparently we've been confusing people a little bit later. So I'm down in the studio and I'm going to do a quick run through on a few finer points of the lost wax casting technique that I use for doing a lot of my pieces. So let me turn you guys around and get started. <music> Now, this is my wax bench, and if anybody's been with us for a while, you've probably seen glimpses of it occasionally. But let me run through the basic process that it takes to do this kind of lost wax casting. The first thing you need is you need a master. Now, the master could be an actual thing, like um, a piece of archaeological stuff. I have a few pieces here. There's a piece there that I haven't done anything with yet where you actually have a physical piece. Now, generally speaking, these physical pieces are not in good enough condition to be used as is. When you have that situation, what you wind up doing is you make a mold of this piece of metal, and then you take my wax pot, which is over here. One of the wax pots, we own more than one. This is the fancy one that Henry and I both have shown using lately. And this is one of our more original kinds here. And you have a mold. And I should have, let's see. Thinking I might have an example. Nope, that's not it. Let's see. I have some molds over here which will not be used anymore. And that is because they're either an intermediary stage or they failed in some other way. Let's see nuts. I'll be right back. Okay, I found one. <laughs> this is a mold that was made from an original piece. I have this actual, you can see it's a cross. I own a copy of this actual cross. It was found by a metal detector back in the 1960s, and these are super common throughout Great Britain and all the way across Northern Europe. I have found a couple of them in various museums in like Warsaw, Poland, and stuff like that. But they, you know, you can see there's both sides of it. And if you were to smush these together, boink, and put wax in the center of that, you would get a cross. Now, this is worn. It's not perfect. And it's not in as good a shape as I wanted it to be. So what I did was I cast the this in wax using this machine here. You turn this on, turn this machine on. You pressurize it with a with a uh, vacuum pump actually with a uh, not a vacuum pump it is a <laughs> compressor that's what i was looking for <laughs> Jeez. so you take this you turn it on you wait till the wax inside it is molten you attach this to a air compressor and then when you push on this plate here, actually push on this with your mold, like that, it will squirt wax into here. Now, I can then take that wax, which is not perfect. Remember, this was an imperfect mold. And I could repair it to make the piece look just the way I want it to look. Then I can make another mold. Let's see, and I should have one up here. Let's see, that's probably it there. Yep, there it is. And this one has all the details in it that I want it to have in it. It's also got a little bit of red wax, but that's okay. Ignore the red wax. Uh, this is a, not a perfect mold in the sense that the uh, molding material did not work right with the way it was supposed to, but the mold is good enough to produce the waxes that I need. Now, I've got that wax now. I've sat here and made a bunch of them using this machine. I then take that wax, and go back over to my bench. Then I would, I have storage over here for such things. Let's see, where are the crosses? I just reorganized this material over here the other day because 
I had run out of room for the various categories, excuse me, hiccups, for the various categories of uh, waxes. I have them organized by uh, topic. This is uh, award medallions and things over here. This is some Slavic stuff. Uh, this is all Viking here. Uh, let's see. This is all Roman down here. This is a mix of Anglo-Saxon and medieval over here. But this guy are those crosses I was telling you about. Now, at this point, I'm actually going to switch away from the cross because I don't need to. Ca I don't need to do any of those things. I currently have just turned on these two pieces of equipment here. This is a wax pen where the tip is hot like a soldering iron would be. And this is the uh, wax pot, which has got a sticky wax in it. Um, it does not get as hot as the wax that is in the wax injector that I showed you before that makes either, well, that, that happens to make red wax. You'll notice there's multiple colors of wax over here. And that's a whole nother conversation. Uh, the... The fancy machine is currently using pink wax. The uh, machine I showed you is using red wax. And I have another machine that is simpler that uses blue wax. And the blue wax and the red wax have different characteristics, and so does the pink wax. The pink wax is specifically designed for high-pressure injection like that. The red wax is very tolerant of cold temperatures. So I mostly use that in the winter time. The blue wax is um, gets kind of brittle in the winter time. Uh, you can see that this has shattered here, but I use that in the summertime when it's really ridiculously hot, and that allows me to have stuff that is doesn't melt as easily in the summertime. The red wax can actually get kind of like too flexible in your hands, and then it won't work right. So let's come over here. I'm currently working on thimble rings, which is just like a thimble. You would wear it. Let me grab one that's semi, the right size. There we go. You'd wear it on your finger like this. It would obviously be made out of metal. And I cast these in pewter. I cast them in bronze. And I cast them in sterling silver. And you wear it instead of a thimble because thimbles were really not used... Uh, in the Arabic nations, the Middle East, it, it was used earlier than it was in Europe. The thimble like this, as far as we know, did not make it to England until about 1200. Um, it, it didn't come into common use until about 1400. So, yeah, there was a lot of people with stuck fingers out there. Now, that doesn't mean they didn't have thimbles. They could have been using leather thimbles. They could have been using other types of pusher sticks or whatever. But remember, needles are expensive, so you have to be really careful with your needles. So, yeah. Anyway, I make these, and the molds that I showed you, like I, for the cross, would I have the same sort of thing for thimble rings. And what I do is I take the wax, and I know I repaired, let's see, I think I repaired this one last night. Sometimes they don't come out perfectly, and that's one of the reasons I've been remaking some of the wax molds and stuff. Uh, I need to trim off this little stick here, and then I will show you what I'm going to do. Okay, I'm back. So, here's a thimble. This happens to be a, I think that's an extra large size, but I'm not sure. Anyway, see, it's got a little stick on the end of it. That's called a sprue. And that sprue is going to be the way that the metal gets from the outside of the flask to the inside of the flask. Now, I'm going to take... I'm going to push this wax down. Right now, this wax is not completely melted yet. But as I push it, it squishes up from the edges. So I'm going to take wax on the edge. And I'm going to put this right here. And you notice it stays pretty well. Now, the reason it stays is it's a really sticky wax. It's actually, uh, I'll get some on my finger. Like I say, it's not as hot as the other stuff, so it's not particularly uncomfortable. Let's see. There it is. <laughs> it, it 
hardens almost instantly on my finger. It's really sticky and it lets you glue things together quickly without uh, using any additional heat. So when I'm just putting things in place, I can use this stuff. It acts like kind of like rubber cement almost, except that uh, when I'm ready to finish putting the piece in place, like, okay, the piece is in place there. Let me go see if I have a, let me go see if I have a thing that'll hold my phone. Okay, there we are. I just realized that I had a, uh, I had a special thing that would hold my uh, camera sitting over on my uh, enamel bench. I haven't used it in a while. So back to where we were. We were talking about the rings, the thimble rings. So as you can see now, looking closely, there is kind of a little bit of bulgy stuff here. That is the uh, sticky wax that I used. And while it's good enough to hold things in place for this, it's not good enough to hold it in place for the final casting. So... What I will do is I will take the wax pen that I talked about that works like a soldering iron and I will touch some wax onto the end of it and then I will smooth this around and that does two things. It smooths out that bump a little bit and it also makes sure that the piece is more solidly attached to the wax base. This part that I'm touching that sticks up is called a sprue. This is called a button. And when this piece is actually cast, this part here will be gone. This will be upside down and you'll be looking at the top of, there'll be a hole here that you pour the metal into. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to continue this process until this flask is full of little waxes that are ready to for the next step which is to be invested and i will be doing that this afternoon so i will show that process too i mentioned early on that i was be making why i be making uh <coughs> molds using in this in this case i actually showed a little artifact that little guy right there that was found in Great Britain. They're saying uh, 800 AD, British found, blah, 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 whatever. Anyway, some of the stuff that they tell you sometimes is incorrect and you need to do your own research. <laughs> I bought that a while ago. Uh, if you're not actually, don't have access to um, an original that you can work with, you create what's called a master wax. And a wa master wax can, it doesn't have to be wax, but in this case, I do create them in, in wax. This is a pelican and her piety, which is a medieval symbol. The pelican feeds her infant chicks with her the blood from her own breast. It's part of the medieval mythology. And uh, it's used as a symbol of a specific award in the organization, the medieval organization that Henry and I play with. And I sell buttons. And these are, this is a button. It's a blank for a button. And uh, what I did was I created this out of wax. And then I would make the mold from this. And then again, I would cast wax examples of this. Let's see if I have any right now. No, I don't. Um, the reason I don't have any over here is because I only cast these in pewter. So that would go straight from, the, that doesn't require this additional step of wax. I have been thinking about doing them in bronze, but I haven't gotten around to it. But say I had a, Here's another pelican on our piety. There we go. That one is on a uh, on a medallion. And uh, in this case, you'd see I'd have this and it would be put onto a button the same way as these thimble rings are. Hopefully this makes a little more sense. <laughs> okay, I'm going to finish getting this thing finished with lots of little thimble rings. And then I will take you next over to the um, measuring station.